In today's video, I'm going to share with you a couple of different reasons why I don't recommend you take technology to bed with you. I am sure that you have heard about separation and not bringing tech to bed, whether that's your phone or other technology. But let's really talk about it in a practical way of how it actually stops you being able to either overcome your long-term insomnia or sleep problems, or simply just stops your uh, body and your mind to be able to sleep really well. Both of these apply depending on the severity of the problem. And technology is part of our life. So this is not about uh, never ever using technology for the right reasons. But in this video, I really wanted to share this part of my answer to um, a client about the real reasons and how it actually relates to what their uh, sleep problems are. Because I think when we understand something in a more practical way, it actually gives us a, a, a whole different way of looking at it and then take action accordingly. So behavioral change, as one example, doesn't just come from us forcing change onto ourselves. When we know it's the right thing for us, then we often actually tend to follow the right thing that will create a good outcome. So technology is one of those things that I often talk about. It is simply part of our life. Uh, and technology does not have to be something that has a negative influence. So let's really look at how we can create a better relationship between our technology use during the daytime and separating that from our nighttime so our body and our mind can really create great quality sleep for many, many years to come, no, no matter where our technology use will end up going. And just as a reminder, uh, this is going to be an answer to a client, but this conversation was a longer conversation. So I really just share with you the most important parts of their journey with this particular question. But I work with clients for a longer period of time. So this is just one of those puzzle pieces that we put together so that a person can overcome their sleep problems. And that's that word of warning. So this will be just part of that conversation. But I am sure that you're going to be able to take something away and relate it to your experience. These are things that I often see in my practice. So I'm sure that you will get value from uh, this conversation I had with the client. Now, before I share that with you, as always, I wanted to welcome you back. If you're part of my community already, thank you so much for your continuous support. If you're brand new and you haven't yet, then hit that subscribe button below, hit that little bell as well, so I can let you know when I post new videos. And later on, if you watched and liked the content of this video, hit that like button below as well. And those of you who are brand new to sort of watching any of my content, then I'm just going to quickly introduce myself. My name is Beatrix Schmidt. I'm a sleep coach, a professional speaker, and the creator of the Sleep Skills for Life program, which is very much my way of helping clients like you who struggle with whether that's sleep problems or longer term insomnia. And it's based on me overcoming my insomnia as well as helping clients for the last 10 years. So it's a combination of not just my personal experiences, but working with so many clients over the years as well. So let's start, turn our attention back to how we can create a better relationship between our tech so that it can actually really help us to be able to fall asleep in an easier way and actually sleep through the night without disturbances as well. And some of these ones are very sneaky ones. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing you how these things relate to your situation as well. So the reason you want to separate your space and closeness to tech is it creates a physical clear boundary. Now, when you leave it on your bedside table, your mind knows its hands reach. You don't even have to make effort to reach it. If the light goes upwards, 
it is likely to be disturbing because light is one of those things that your brain will still understand even if your eyes are closed because the, there are ways to to um, respond to light even with eyes shut. We know that. So simple tweaks, and I would have said this in videos, so I think that you either need to rewatch the video to connect the information because I explain why and what. So it might be that you need a refresher and maybe watch it again. I don't know. But first of all, from being away, either tucked on the side of the bedside table on the floor is no longer arm's reach. You can charge it, but in order to even reach your phone, to turn the alarm off to, I don't care for what reason, and we shouldn't be using our phone anyway, but there is a transition process. If you really have to reach your phone, your mind has to decide if it's, if it's worthy enough for you to actually get out of bed or you can't be bothered because it's not that important. So that's why I say distance, and it has to be put on silent and please don't have the light coming up because it is going to be something that your mind has to assess even if you're sleeping because remember the unconscious and subconscious does not sleep when you sleep. So your mind will always consume, your brain, your mind will always consume information even if you sleep. Light exposure is not ignored just because your eyes are closed. So, or just because you're on the other side. Your mind knows that you left your phone upside down. Uh, sorry, upside up. Your mind knows that even if you're now sleeping because that is the behavior and that is the memory piece that is attached to where did I leave my phone? That doesn't go away just because you fall asleep. That remains a memory piece. But if, you're, if you now put, let's say, your phone on the other side of the bedside table on the floor, facing down, your mind equally knows that there is absolutely no reason the phone should disturb you because it's number one far away, it's on silent, and the light is upside down, which means it will never have a chance to disturb me. You might, your mind knows that. Every single decision action behavior creates a memory card that's filed away in your mind. It doesn't mean you have to remember it all the time, but your mind shifts through every single thing all the time. That is that its job 24-7 without putting without you putting effort in. That's the job of the mind. So by choosing appropriate actions that create separation, it creates, I know I can't be disturbed because my phone is either off or on complete silence, so there cannot be a disturbance because it's never going to tell me that something is happening. Your mind knows that. It's over to you really have a good look at how you're able to separate yourself from technology in order to be able to really help the body and the mind to transition from the daytime to the nighttime and sleep so that you can have better quality sleep. I think this relationship we have where we not actually disconnecting, not just in a physical way, but in an emotional and a mental way as well, disconnecting, is really something that I see in my practice all the time. Technology does not have to cause issues. It's really how we work with technology to use it for a proactive and positive uh, purpose and reason, rather than it creating other behaviors and other situations where it's actually turning in something into a negative situation. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you, how this related to you. And let me know if maybe you found one of these things that you are going to change. So again, our relationship with technology is quite personal to us. How we use it, why we use it is going to be different. But I want to find out what you are going to do differently moving forward to help yourself 
improve your sleep and even overcome your long-term insomnia and sleep problems if you haven't yet this is the time to hit that like button below as well so i know that these are some of the things that you're interested in and if you want to subscribe to my channel then hit that subscribe button below and hit that bell as well so i can let you know when i post new videos other than that thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time